Something fierce this weather, but what do you know about the Reds? Just the weather for Slim Sally. He puts them in the groove better when it's hot. Look how Walter Ruther is going. Nine straight games won. The 1919 baseball season and World Series are mostly remembered for the Black Sox scandal. Chicago White Sox players who bet against their own team and tried to make sure they lost the series. But overshadowed by the Black Sox scandal is the 1919 Cincinnati Reds team, which won the National League pennant and brought the Queen City its first World Series championship. Some fans were deeply skeptical about the Reds, who had mostly losing seasons since joining the National League in 1890. The Reds ain't been good since 1882, and they ain't gonna be good now. They'll blow it by August, like always. Don't be such a grump, old man. We've had winning teams the past two years, and we're red hot this season. The lineup sported stars like center fielder Ed Rausch, who led the National League in batting, while team captain Heine Groh was the league's top third baseman. And a deep pitching staff with twirlers like Hot Eller, Slim Sally, and Walter Ruther anchored the Reds' defense. Extra, extra, Reds win the pennant. Even before the regular season was over, the Reds captured the National League pennant and were on their way to their first World Series. The city threw a party and held a parade honoring the team. And it wasn't lost on the Reds or fans that it also was the 50th anniversary of the original Cincinnati Red Stockings and their unbeaten 1869 season. While Reds fans celebrated, many baseball experts thought American League teams were stronger than National League teams, and they expected the White Sox to win. Personally, I believe the White Sox should win. American League followers will argue that pitching in the National League is far inferior to that in the American. I believe the White Sox will win. Figuring that the pitching strength is even, I believe that the White Sox are a better balanced team. Cincinnati's task is to beat two wonderful pitchers, Eddie Sakati and Claude Williams. And you can take it from us, that's a real man's job. If the 1919 World Series is to be decided with base hits, runs, and championship pitching, then I favor the White Sox to conquer the Reds of Cincinnati. But there were some experts who favored the Reds. There's too much impetus behind the Cincinnati machine for it to be stopped by the White Sox. Yes, friend reader, Cincinnati for mine. The 1919 World Series was to have nine games, with the first game held in Cincinnati. Baseball fans flocked to the Queen City and lined up for tickets. Hotels like the Gibson on Fountain Square were booked beyond capacity. The city even passed an ordinance to let fans sleep on park benches at night. The Reds won the first two games at Redland Field. The White Sox won the third game at their home field of Comiskey Park. The team seemed to be evenly matched and no one noticed anything inappropriate from the White Sox players. Reds fans had hoped the winning game would be in Cincinnati, but game eight was held in Chicago. A mechanical scoreboard run by telegraph operators was installed at Music Hall. Fans watched the board as the Reds triumphed over the White Sox, winning the World Series. The Reds returned to Cincinnati as heroes. Hopes were high for the coming years. By September 1920, the Black Sox scandal had been revealed. The scandal tarnished baseball, and eight members of the White Sox were permanently banned from the game. Doubt was cast over the Reds' championship win, but Reds owner, August Herman, defended the team's win. We won the National League pennant fairly and squarely, and had to beat a team or two that were stronger than the White Sox, playing at their best and on the level. It's impossible to know what would have happened had the White Sox played fairly, but the 1919 Cincinnati Reds conquered the National League and won the team's first world championship. They created a legacy that should stand on its own for another 100 years.